something that's very close to heart. Um, having made a lot of tackles on the reverse myself, many I believe to have been good, but been punished for them. Um, it's quite a, you often hear the comments um, coming in from the wrong side, and I think the umpire's already made his decision before the tackle's been made, but certainly in the international game, you're seeing far more tackles, good tackles being made from behind the, the ball carrier, from the side. It's a, a free hit that is given away a hell of a lot in our league. Um, and, and on many occasions, it's actually a good tackle. Well, the game's a far more physical game in Europe and internationally. And I think our women suffer very much from this. Um, one, we need to stop blowing the whistle as much. If the tackler fails to make a clean tackle, umpire should take account of a number of things. First of all, has a defender attempted to play the ball? If not, then he needs to accept the punishment. Again, George to McCann. Yeah, big shove there. Lucky not to get more. The speed of the attacker, the faster they're going, then the more severe the foul. Where the tackle is coming from. Players understand that the further you are behind the attacker, the greater the risk. Therefore, if you miss, you should be prepared to accept more severe consequences. Lastly, it's the amount of space and de covering defenders between the offence and the goal. If it's the last defender, the tackle fouls and stops the player from having a shot, then it's a lot worse. If there's loads of space and l the rest of the team are covering, then obviously it's not a severe offence. Michael Bloom keeps the ball in play. One of the aspects that causes debate on reverse stick tackling is body contact. In the modern game, contact is inevitable, but it's important to try and determine what is acceptable and what isn't. In international hockey, contact is acceptable. If the tackler is attempting to play the ball, if contact does not alter the line that the attacker is running on, and as long as the contact does not stop the attacker on the line he is running on, then there's no need for the whistle to be blown. Contact between players can sometimes lead to other management issues, but in these examples we've been looking at the tackling process and suggested that there are, in some cases, opportunities where it is possible to play on. So we need to be stronger on the ball. So in all of these examples, I think there's no need for the whistle to be blown. See, there I would blow the foul. So it sticks quite high, but having watched it now from a totally different angle, I don't see anything wrong in that whatsoever. The attacker needs to be stronger. Again, that's a great tackle. Body contact, but no foul. It's not putting off the attacker at all. See, a good tackle. What's happened there? The, the ball carrier has knocked his stick away. His stick's on the floor, as you can see there. The ball carrier's driven through, made it look a lot worse, and he's got the foul. Again, body contact, but great tackle. fine there but again you just feel because he's fallen over the whistle may have gone right there really it was a clean tackle good lean, lean on him there is body contact but the momentum's going forward the attacker is still a good tackle when I'm running alongside the defender and my tackle knocks the ball back towards the defender's goal that has to be taken into account whereas if the ball continues to go sideways or forwards then the more likely there was a foul committed I then try and get back as quickly as possible to make a tackle. Where I try and win the ball, the defender changes line, runs into me, the whole crowd cheer. What the umpire has to blow is what he sees, not get caught up in the moment of the crowd shouting and uh, the defender's good skill.